bear with me this evening. This is a pulled together at the last minute and I'm going to be doing live coding, which is an amazing combination. Um, so the plan is to put the fun back into testing, although you'll spot that there isn't fun in the word testing. Um, so what is test script? That's the, the theme of the, tonight's talk. So we're going to look at what test script is and then we're going to live code very badly um, a simple program that uses test script and try and convince you it's actually a really good approach to testing specifically command line programs, but actually anything. So what is test script? Um, that's the package path there for test script. Um, it provides a support for defining file system based tests by creating scripts in a directory. So that's well, we're going to unpack that over the next few slides. It was originally written by Russ Cox um, and used, it's used extensively as part of the Go command tests in the Go distribution. So you can actually go and have a look in the Go distribution and see, I think now, hundreds of test script tests. Um, it was extracted from being an internal package within the Go distribution to being a package that you can import and use by Roger Pepe. Um, and Roger has been the person who's put in the majority of the work, so we have him to thank, uh, as well as Russ, for, for all this work. So continuing the, this question, um, you pass test script itself, and there's a run function, we'll see this in a minute, a directory, the name of a directory that contains a number of scripts. Um, each script is a special text archive, and we're going to see what that actually means just below there. But it has generally at the top of it some shell-like commands that are the thing that the script itself, um, that, where you're sort of going to be asserting things, performing various commands, uh, followed by zero or more supporting files. And so that's the archive bit of it. So it's a, strip, it's a script and an archive, like a tar file combined, all in one text file. So as you can see at the bottom here, I've got a very simple comment on the first line there that says, hello world. So this looks quite shell-like. Second command there is exec, which sort of you understand what that might be. It's going to say then call the cat command in your standard shell and pass in hello text, the file name. And then there's a comparison there from the, res from the result of the previous line saying, does standard out match the string, that regular expression that we're passing in there? And we're also asserting that standard error doesn't include anything in this situation. So you can see the reference to hello.txt there on the second line. That is where this the, the file contents itself, hello.txt, are defined within the same script file. And this is the archive bit. So there you've actually got your test that is the script at the top and the supporting files all defined within the same file. And that's kind of convenient, particularly when you have small tests like this. So each script, when it comes to run, runs in a fresh working directory, uh, av available as an environment variable as $work. There's some sort of pseudo isolation here. This is not Docker level isolation going on, but it all runs in a separate, with a separate home directory and a separate temp directory as well. So really you have some degree of isolation there, but clearly this is not, as I said, Docker level isolation. So the supporting files, and hello.txt is one of those supporting files here, are extracted, unpacked relative to our working directory. And then the script begins with a working directory of the work directory if that makes sense. So that's why in this situation here, cat exec cat hello.txt kind of works because it's all happening within that same work directory. So the command script looks like shell, is it? No, it's not. It's just a very simple language that has been defined. It's intended to look like shell, but it is much less powerful. Um, it, the script, unlike bash, which will actually continue, a bash script will continue if there are errors unless you do something special. Um, this script will actually stop if it hits anything unexpected, any error, a command that exits with a non-zero exit code, unless it's been negated, for example. So as, it says, as I said, it supports negation, accessing and setting environment variables, end-of-line comments, quoting command words, and very basic conditions, but not if-else constructs like you might find in Bash or other scripts. Are there any predefined commands? Yes, there are. Um, CD for change directory. Chmod, so you can sort of get a feeling for why this is like a subset or, or a very limited form of bash or one of the other scripting languages. And the link to the full docs is, um, will give you the full list of uh, predefined commands. So enough of talk, because I can see everybody falling asleep. This is where it's going to go badly wrong. So here I have a very simple package main, and we're just going to get started here by saying from the print line, hello world. Okay, very simple. And then here we're just going to say go run. 
Are we in the right directory? Go, yes we are. Go, run, main.go. Fantastic, working. So we think this is actually a bit boring, so what I'm now going to do is actually define a flag that allows me to specify what the greeting is and the target of who we're greeting. So let's define two flags to do that. Uh, so let's say f greeting, if I can type, equals flag dot string, greeting, and we're going to say, make the default be hello, and then we're going to have um, what greeting? Sorry, I'm not feeling very creative here. And then we're going to have f target, equal flag dot string, ta whoops, target, and then we're going to have world, must be the default, who are we greeting? Okay. And then I must remember to do flag.parse down here. Please shout out if I'm actually making any errors as we go. Which is good, okay. So now let's try this with greeting, different greeting. Let me just clear this. Uh, with a separate greeting of hi. Oh, of course I haven't. That was a bit obvious, wasn't it? <laughs> Goodness me. Come on, shout these things out. This isn't going to work otherwise. Um, Okay, F greeting. Okay, hopefully that looks a bit better. Anything else? Then we'll carry on. Yes. Even better. Fine. So now we think, oh, this is great, but I'd like to write some tests. So how would you actually start testing a program like this? You think, mm, okay, could write a test and then how would I invoke main, and how would I check that what's printed to standard out is what I expect? It starts to get pretty ugly pretty quickly. And this is just a very basic command line application. But think of something like the go, the go um, command go, which is hugely complicated with a huge number of subcommands. Where do you actually start on all of that? So this is where test script comes in. And so what we're going to do is, first of all, before we actually start talking about test script, we're going to restructure this slightly to make it slightly more amenable to testing. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to break apart our main function into three functions here, and you'll see why in just a second. So let me just quickly do that. What we want to do is call os.exit here with the result of a function called main1. And what we're going to do main1 is going to return an int. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, we've got a problem here, is that this is not going to, so what we now want to do is split apart main1 into main er, and this is going to return an error. And we're going to pop that in there, and because I'm not actually doing any sort of error handling here, uh, main er, Uh, OS return one, return zero. How's that looking? So yeah, we just split apart our main here in order that we have a function that returns an int, which we can pass directly to os.exit, which is kind of what main is all about. Otherwise, unless you call os.exit with a different value, it's going to exit with zero. So then we've actually split main one into another function, main er, so we can explicitly have an error, fun an, an error version of main, if you like, where we can return an error instead of panicking or anything like that, sort of referring to Nick's talk. Okay, so let's just check that this still works. Phew. Good, okay. The reason for this will become pretty obvious now. So let's switch to editing main test. And we're gonna write, so test example t, testing.t. Okay, and now what we're going to run is test script, whoops, this is where we, test script comes into things. Okay, and test script, we want to pass in t, the testing t, and then we test script dot params. And then here, what we pass in is the, the name of the directory which is going to contain the test scripts. So here, if we just hover over run here for the documentation, it says, um, so when we're running, this is the entry point to test script, if you like. You just pass it, as we said before, the name of the directory that contains these scripts. Now, we haven't created any of these scripts yet. We're about to do that. And this is all that's actually required, but for one thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat here and just steal this here. So 
There's another quick, another thing we have to do here is actually for within our scripts, we have to sort of create a shorthand for running the code that we have defined in our main. So you can see here, this is where this definition of the main one function comes in. So in test script, it's possible to actually define your own custom commands, and this is the one way of doing it. So here, all we're doing is defining a custom command example, so that when it sees the word, the command, or the word example in a, um, in a test script, it will run the function main one. And as we saw, let's just go back to that. Main one is just calling on to main, main er. So this is, this is the way, that, a very simple way in which you can extend test script with your own custom commands. So let's just remind ourselves what it is we're trying to test here. We're effectively trying to emulate what is going on here when we call go run main.go. We could, of course, go build here and run the resulting binary. So what are we actually going to test? So let's create ourselves a, um, a first script, and let's call it noargs.test. And so let's just put a comment at the top to keep it nice and helpful. So test that our example works when run with no arguments. So what are we expecting in this situation? So if we just run example, okay, what we could do is actually just see what this, actually, what this is going to do. So let's just, we've created, I think we should be able to call go test here. Excuse me, go test. We can. And if we run it in verbose mode, we can actually see what the output is here. So this is test script having done its thing. And let's just see. So now go test with minus V is actually telling us what it's actually doing. And you can see it's going in to run this test example slash no args test script that we've just created. Then the first thing it does is actually dump out for us very helpfully the, the limited environment, as I said, that it's running within. And then at the end, it says, well, what happens? You can see the comment there, test that our example works when run with no arguments. And then it's run that command, and it said, standard out includes hello world. OK, so what we can actually do in this situation is say that standard out should match hello world like that. Let me just check. And then we can run our test again, and that passes. Fantastic, OK? So now what we want to do, so that's a very simple script. That is just as if we were the user running it. We're just calling example and checking that the output is as expected. So, and, and the default is hello world. So now let's have a custom greeting.text script. Ooh. And check that custom greetings work. So now what we're going to call is example with minus greeting hi. And so let's just do something slightly different in this situation. What we're going to do is define in line here. This is in line. This is an archive. This is a file that will be extracted to the work directory. And so this should say, hi, world, like that. So now what we're going to do is compare standard out with output. Oops. Oh, it's just the file name's a bit longer. Excuse me. So now let's check that this works. Go test. Ooh, what have I done here? Uh, so the it's quoted. Mm. Say again. In the test file itself, custom greeting. This is. Oh, thank you. Very good spot. <laughs> no quotes needed there. But effectively, if you wanted to have this, you'd, if you wanted to pass um, a space in the middle of an argument, hi there, you'd have to do that with single quotes. It's not double quoted, unlike bash and things. Thank you for that spot. So this is obviously going to fail as well, because I've made it hi there. So now let's just change this to be hi and run our test again. So that passes. So you can hopefully see how easy it has been for us to actually quickly change our main function, splitting it up into two, three separate functions there, and then quickly adapt it to being test scriptable, and then how quick it is as well to actually add further scripts. Now, we've only just scratched the surface of things uh, today. The full docs cover how to add custom commands, custom conditions, and it tells you in a bit more detail about what test script can do. So with that, I think I've run way over time. And I won't keep you from your drinks anymore. Uh, anyone got any questions, come and grab me at the break. Thank you.